This video is on section 2-3 on biconditionals and definitions. By the end of this video, you should know what a biconditional is, be able to write a biconditional, and also be able to recognize good definitions. Okay? And this video is covering geometry standard G.6.1. A biconditional is a single true statement that combines a true conditional and its true converse. So when the conditional and the converse are both true, we can write it as a biconditional. Okay? And the way that you write a biconditional is by joining the two parts, um, the hypothesis and the conclusion of the conditional. Um, you combine those with the phrase if and only if. Okay, sometimes written IFF by some mathematicians, it's shortened that way, but in this class we'll typically write out if and only if. Um, now notice that a conditional is, was abbreviated P arrow Q, and the converse was abbreviated Q arrow P, and since they're pointing at each other, you can write a biconditional with P double arrow Q, because they're pointing it at both um, at both letters because both parts are true. So it's true both ways. Okay, so let's let's see a um, a biconditional. Now let me point out again that biconditionals um, are written when both the conditional and the converse are both true. So in number one, the conditional is if two angles are supplementary, then they me then their measures add to 180 degrees. And that's true because whenever an angle is supplementary, I'm sorry, when two angles are supplementary, their measures add to 180 degrees. The converse of that statement is if the measures of the two angles add to 180 degrees, then the two angles are supplementary. Okay, since those are both true, um, I will write them as a biconditional. Okay, and again, the two parts is this one and this one. Okay, so I'll take those two parts and write if and only if between them. Two angles are supplementary. If and only if their measures add to 180 degrees. Okay, um, so notice that there's no if at the very beginning of the statement, and there's no then anywhere in the statement. So we're not using the if-then form. We have the two parts and the phrase if and only if right in the middle of them. Okay, another example of this. Um, this conditional is if it is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. That's true. The converse if it divides a segment into two congruent segments, then it is a midpoint, is also true. And since the conditional and the converse are both true, I will write it as a biconditional. Now the two parts is um, if it is a midpoint and it divides a segment into two congruent segments, um, those are the two parts. So the biconditional is it is a midpoint if and only if um, it divides a segment into two congruent segments. Okay. Again, there's no if at the very beginning. There's no then in the statement. I have the two parts with um, if and only if right in the middle of them. Okay, let's go the other way. Let's take a biconditional and write the conditional and the converse um, from them. Okay. So there, here's the phrase if and only if. So which means 
the two parts are here and here. So the conditional is um, if an angle is a right angle, then um, it measures um, 90 degrees. Okay. Um, the um, converse is the, um, that order reversed. So if an angle measures 90 degrees, then it is a right angle. Okay, um, one more example. A figure is a point if and only if it is a location. Um, the two parts are separated by if and only if. So the conditional is if a figure is a point, then it is a location, and the converse is if a figure is a location, then it is a point. Okay, keep in mind that the conditional and the converse um, must both be true for this to be a true biconditional. <coughs> All right, um, let's change the, um, the topic a little bit. Um, a statement is considered reversible if its converse is true. So if, if the converse is true, the statement is considered reversible. So we'll look at these and see if they're reversible. If it is, we'll write them as a true biconditional, and if not, we'll just write not reversible. Number one, an angle bisector is a ray that divides the angle into two congruent angles. Okay, let's see here. If I, if I reverse that, it means that um, if a ray divides the angle into two congruent angles, then it's an angle bisector, and that would be true. So it would be reversible, and I would write it as a biconditional. Um, I would say, um, mm, let's see here, an angle bisector so here, a figure is an angle bisector if and only if it is a ray that divides the angle into two congruent angles. Okay, number two. Um, a linear pair are two angles whose measures add up to 180 degrees. Okay, if I reverse that, I would get two angles whose measures add to 180 degrees. <coughs> um, now, would that describe a linear pair, and only a linear pair? And the answer is no, it wouldn't, um, because a linear pair, they also have to be adjacent. Okay, now keep in mind that a linear pair, um, they have to be adjacent to form a straight line. Okay, um, so this isn't reversible because um, 
because the converse would not be true. Okay, so this is not reversible. Now, um, a biconditional is a really good definition. Okay, um, and so definitions are considered good if it can be written as a true biconditional and if it's reversible. So if if um, if it's true and if it's reversible, it would be a good definition. So here's a um, a question: Is this a good definition of a compass? A compass is a geometric tool. Now that's true. A compass is a geometric tool, uh, but is it reversible? Is every geometric tool a compass? Well, no. There's protractors and rulers and other tools that are not compasses. So this is not um, a good definition. because it's not reversible. Okay. Uh, number two. Um, perpendicular lines are two lines that intersect to form right angles. Well, that's true. Um, would the converse be true? So are two lines that intersect to form right angles, are they perpendicular lines? And yeah, they are. So both the conditional and the converse would both be true, and it's reversible. And so yes, it would be um, a good definition. Number three, a triangle is a polygon with three sides. So that's true. Um, and is a polygon with three sides always a triangle? And the answer is yes. So these both are good definitions um, because it would form a true biconditional, and it's reversible. Okay, this video was on biconditionals and um, definitions, and hopefully by now you know what a biconditional is. Um, you can write a biconditional using that phrase if and only if right between the two parts. Um, and you can recognize a good definition by um, if it would form a true biconditional and if it's reversible.